Good morning. The United States has put on a lot of export curbs and trade restrictions on technology and tools that can be used to make semiconductors. These sanctions are intended to prevent China from being able to build them. This idea is similar to what Western countries did about 40 years ago to prevent key technologies from being used in the Soviet bloc. But the world is very different today, and it's clear that the sanctions on the semiconductor chips are not working for China the way the tech bans did during the Cold War. There are two big problems with this strategy when executed now. The first is that knowledge is much more widely shared instantly. The internet has seen to that. It's impossible for key knowledge to stay in one place, siloed off for very long. But the second problem is that people move too, and people know things, and Chinese people in particular know a lot of things. The Economist has just published several charts which make this point painfully clear. High quality science papers by percentage. China has gone from near zero 20 years ago to first place. The Nature Index, this number is in thousands. Same thing just since 2015 way behind the US and EU in 2015 to first place today. High impact papers by scientific discipline in the year 2022. China's in red, US orange, European Union's in blue. Material science, chem, engineering, CS, environmental, ag, physics, math. These are all the people you're gonna need, by the way, to build semiconductors, eight of those 10 fields, which China now leads in for scientific research. The Chinese are also spending a lot of money in universities for university and government research also, more than doubling since 2012, while in the US we have plateaued. Here's a key bit from economists also, more scientists are going to China than going out. China has more researchers now than America and the European Union. People can move and they take their knowledge with them. Western governments have been surprised that China continues to build chips that they shouldn't be able to build because of our sanctions. But this is the reason why. In December, Reuters had a feature on this theme. And here's a story. Last year, this would be in 2022. Then, a group of Silicon Valley executives came back to China and started a company that develops a key technology called OPC. OPC is optical proximity correction, and it's a technique that fixes image errors when making semiconductor chips. OPC is crucial for increasing the yield and the quality in semiconductors during the manufacturing process. The name of the company is SEDA and it reveals how challenging our containment effort is. Zhang, the CEO, was working for Siemens in Silicon Valley. He and three other executives left, came to China, set up CETA, and told investors that they could have their OPC tool ready to use in China by early 2024, this year. Their goal is to be number one in the world for OPC. Big investors piled in immediately, including SMIC, which is now the third biggest chip maker in the world. US companies aren't allowed to sell to SMIC. So these guys just came over and set up a Chinese company and SMIC now is not only their customer, but their investor. Siemens did confirm that Zhang and his friends are gone and that CETA might be a problem for them in this market. This is a good take here. The US government is cutting China's access to tools from American companies that build chips. And this is the reason that Zhang and his colleagues left. The restrictions would hurt their careers by limiting where they could sell their products. CETA's launch is similar to many others here. It's hard to determine who owns the intellectual property anyway. What if it's a group of Chinese researchers in Silicon Valley who invented it? But the U.S. company might own the IP in a strictly legal sense, but the guys who came up with it can go to the airport. And that's the problem. This is one of the features of the tech industry already. Anyway, a key executive goes from Google to work for Facebook or Amazon to Twitter. In that case, they just go across the street 
to make more money. But these are Chinese citizens, though, with a different set of loyalties and values. And if we tell them they can't sell to the people they know back home here in China, what did we think was going to happen? China is bringing a lot of its expat researchers and engineers back to China, and they are coming back. It's called the Thousand Talents Program for Chinese specialists working in STEM fields overseas. The United States cannot cut the Chinese off like we did the Soviets, says James Lewis at CSIS. This is Michael Brook, formerly of Intel, here in China. The United States is lying across train tracks to try and stop the Chinese. It won't even slow them down. And this will just push China to be more independent. There are hundreds of companies like CETA, hundreds of them. They used to be in California or in Europe, and we told them, you're not allowed to sell your products to China anymore. So they moved back. Thousands of top scientists coming back to China who are now hiring hundreds of thousands of Chinese to work here in China instead of in California or in Europe. This is Suzhou in Jiangsu province. Be good. So do not be worried about your life, what you will eat, or what you'll drink, or what you'll wear. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added.